Hello and welcome back everybody. This is Mystic Games. So this is a kind of a part two to my last video. Um, we're going to be talking about the Ashen Thicket. We're going to be talking about the forge in the Ashen Thicket, which is the, as you guys can see on the screen, Cornerstone Forge. So this is a very interesting mechanic. I talked about it a little, but I didn't go too deep because it was very confusing without being able to see. Um, so as you guys can see, you have like stone spine who is your forge maker essentially you have conditions effects penalties and results so as you guys can see on the conditions I have picked a one star uh, flower so every 50 flower or 50 die produced and they do stack together like you can use them interchangeably um, it equals planting and harvesting speeds are increased by 10% right so then you can also get a penalty which is on the bottom there. And if you take a penalty, what it does is it increases the condition or the effect that the little line is going to, to a two star. So for the flower and the die production, if you took a penalty here, depending on what the penalties were, which I probably should have clicked on it when I was taking the screenshot so you guys could see the different options. But there's different penalties. Some of the penalties are horrible. So for this one in particular, I didn't pick a penalty because Every penalty option that I had was bad. Um, it, it would have it would have broke the game for me to produce flower and die to have whatever the penalty was. I can't remember exactly what the penalty was off the top of my head, but they were all like you didn't you wouldn't want them to stack. Um, so if I was producing fifty die and fifty flower, right, and I did that. 250 honestly I think I got it up I did about 250 uh, flower and die in this game because my harvesting and planting speed was at 50 percent um, by the time I ended with just this bonus not counting my because I, I did buy a or no I did get the order for the 25 percent planting speed early on so I did take that um, which I was just insanely able to pick uh, fertile fields it was like insane um, but what I'm getting at is you have certain negatives that are horrible. So this choice was pretty good. Um, as I said, the issue with it was the amount of time it took me to unlock the forge. Um, which we'll just talk about that real quick. I, I think what they need to do in this map is they need to give you coal, salt, or copper immediately. Um, it would be nice if they gave you two veins of one of those options so either two coal two salt or two copper i mean technically you can mix and match as well if they really wanted to so you can start immediately um and at least try to get one thunder shard immediately without having cut into glades i think that would be a um, beneficial way of setting up this map um but that's just a, a little pet peeve of mine that i had with it other than that i think the map's really fun so, anyways, I took uh, four screenshots for you guys. I wanted to show you each uh, uh, forge result. So this is my first, my first one. You guys can see I called it Green Fields. I made it like a little. Uh, you can pick the picture on it, um, and you can see the effects. So it was super nice. It helped me in the middle of the game. It made me pretty much just. It broke the game. I was able to farm and then pull my people off of the farms pretty much by the end of the season if I really wanted to. Um, next, we're going to look at the second cornerstone that I got, which was forging two of three. And what it was was making my human resolve better. Um, and it was at the cost of 30 amber in the main warehouse. Um, I also had gotten every woodcutter I think it was every three woodcutters I get um, plus two carry weight and I was able to take a penalty to upgrade it to uh, three carry weight from two if I remember. That sounds right. I think that was my choice after because originally I took the screenshot of this thinking I was going to take this one and then I decided it was uh, that one was better than this one so that's what I ended up doing plus the negative uh, actually worked better with the uh, 
the villagers than it did with the amber. Because amber fluctuates and villagers really don't unless you're dying. Um, but again, this one's really strong. There were, there were other conditions that I've seen that are extremely good with, like, resolve and stuff. Like, I had one that was, like, increase biscuits resolve bonus by two every time that you do something. And every time the condition I got was, like, insane one game. And I was just like, that's just a no-brainer. Because I had two people that ate biscuits. And I was like, they're pretty much going to just be at uh, a ton of resolve at all times at this point. As long as I don't run out of biscuits. But, um, yeah. So, essentially, you pick a condition. You have four options. You add it to your four options of whatever effect that you want. And then you take a penalty to boost either the condition or the effect up a star. Um, I believe it goes up to three stars. I don't know if it goes up to four. That would actually be something to test. Um, I don't think I had the option to do so. So let me look at the third and final. <clears throat> so after you complete that, goes to the next. Uh, this is my last choice here. Um, I had no tea production uh, in my my settlement, so I didn't need it. So it was a great penalty to get for my final one. Uh, 40 complex foods produced. Every time you make 40 complex foods, you get hostility reduced by 20 points. Um, up from 15 due to the taking the penalty here. So, pretty much, uh, the issue with this, the only thing I have to say was, this only got triggered once, and it was because I got it so late. Um, this would be absolutely insane of an ability uh, to get like mid game so I, I understand why it's probably at the end game but the issue is it, was, it wasn't even helpful at the end game and, um, because I went through the the system so quick like by the time I got this and I actually mined what I needed to get it I unlocked it and my resolve was just through the roof at that point so I didn't even need it um, but it, it's a cool idea I like the hostility reduction and I like this penalty because if I wasn't going to I thought that was a cool one I would like to see more minus two to productions or minus ones to productions to increase things I think that those are actually really cool because it makes the way that you're going to play the map different um, because you're like essentially choosing to sacrifice potentially making something to you know increase something else which I think is a cool idea Anyway, so I just wanted to show you guys the Cornerstone Forge, the actual, like, what it looks like on the game. Um, as you progress, it keeps telling you three of three. You know, it shows you the picture under, below it. Uh, I call this one Peacekeeper because the whole point would be to uh, produce food just to reduce hostility, which I was doing anyways to beat, you know. I essentially had infinite food at this point because my farms were able to pump out so much food that... Um, I can never not make complex foods. I was probably going to produce 40 complex fruit foods every, probably almost every minute at that point for production speed and everything that I had going on. So, just super strong. Um, I thought this was a very cool mechanic. The only thing I will say about these is that I don't like that you have to give up your epic cornerstones. Um, I feel like they should have just allowed you to have those and then get these as well. Um, I think by removing the epic cornerstones it's essentially making you reliant on getting these in a sense which eh I, I have mixed feelings on that like I don't think it's necessary um, there's also some epic cornerstones I really really like to get so when I don't have access to them because I'm doing this uh, which is not even free like I had to I had to do something to gain this right I had to mine whereas the other ones just wait every year and then I get something out of it uh, it's just a weird, it's a weird trade-off to me. Um, do think this is super cool. Kind of wish that maybe they gave you the epic cornerstones for year one and three, and then you know five, seven, nine. They didn't give you an epic cornerstone. That would be probably better. I'd like to see it top ended where you're gonna be able to, you know, get the extra bonuses to beat it immediately. Um, it also makes it easier to unlock when you're getting extra bonuses. So. I can fo focus more of my population on mining or whatever I'm trying to do to unlock these doing other things. So last but not least, I'm going to show you guys the final screen. So once you guys finish all your cornerstone forges, as you guys can see, you see all mine. Oh yeah, so this is what it was. 
every four foxes in the settlement. It wasn't woodcutters. I think woodcutters was another option. Uh, working capacity is increased by three. And then I took the uh, negative penalty of the negligence penalty for unfavored species is minus two. So I had, at the end, you can see it actually says expected gain six and progress was three or four. Um, I won right when I was about to pick my uh, my civilians, so had I got another fox, it would have went up to nine. Uh, the issue with this this thing too was, by the time I get this one, I got out decently quick. This one took me a little bit longer because I needed something else to mine. Um, and then this one, by the time I got it, I'd won the game. So, because you have a requirement to get these, I wish that they were a little different. Oh. And final note here, so everybody knows, this is probably something I should say in the beginning. Green fields requires 40. Uh, buildings, builder's satchel requires 80. Let me click on this real quick. This requires 120. <clears throat> so the total that you need to mine is 240, which isn't which isn't horrible, um, especially if you find, you know, a couple nodes together. You can get the horse, pretty much get the horse. Um, option which makes everything quicker which I'd highly recommend for this map is you're almost always going to want to get the horse which is either 15 bricks or 15 planks so you should have those ready um, and you're gonna want to get either the horse again or you're gonna want to get the deep shafts for the next one um, so I would recommend saving pipes or gears to do so or having a smithy um, it's very helpful to prepare yourself to be mining and you want to be mining efficiently uh, beavers are actually nice here because they you know they get resolve in mines so that's pretty nice uh, I can tell you right now if you ever got the the wailing echoes or whatever that's called the one that negative hostility one where if you're in mines you just get a ton of reduced host, uh, resolve I think it is that would be really bad on this map that's all I gotta say but um yeah I'd probably be not happy with that one. You have to pull off your uh, guys every every storm. Um, but yeah, fun, fun. I think it needs honestly. I think it could use a little bit more tweaks. Um, but I I highly do recommend the DLC. I do think this is super fun. I think the idea of like crafting your own stuff's cool. Um, I kind of wish they gave you like six conditions, six effects, and then like four or five penalties, or or you could just do six. I think I think more choice would be better here. Um, I don't like the idea that you can only get so many options per uh, your your um, cornerstone because I think it's very limiting anyways just because you have to work to get it. So I think the way to offset that would be to give you more options. Um, but yeah, right now it's four for conditions, four for effects, and three for uh, penalties. Also, here it says it's a one-time pe penalty. It doesn't stack, which it doesn't tell you that when you click on it, I don't think. Let me actually check that, because I don't think it did. I think it just says penalty. Yeah, see, so at the end of the game, it tells... Okay, so that's very interesting. So here it says penalty. Choose a penalty to upgrade a connected effect or condition. Okay. It would be nice if it said choose a one-time penalty to upgrade a connected effect or condition because I literally didn't want to pick certain penalties because I was like this is gonna stack every time I make 50 flower or die uh, and that's gonna be insane because it was such a negative thing I was like I'm going to just lose the game from uh, the penalty you know stacking I won't be able to make food I was like I was like I was like I don't even know why you would pick this um, but that makes more sense. So at the end of the game, it tells you it's a one-time penalty. So apparently, you don't have to worry about your conditioning proccing your penalty more than once. Um, again, I don't know if that goes for anything else. Right? The, there could be other penalties that stack every time, but my hope is that they don't. Um, I'd have to actually play a little bit more to test that out. Anyways, I hope you guys check out the DLC. Uh, if you're against the Storm fans and you're watching this, you probably already have the DLC. But this is a very neat and cool mechanic. As I said, I would like a uh, year three epic cornerstone still, I think, and I'd be a lot happier, I feel like, but other than that, there's a few tweaks I'd probably do if I was the game creator just to see if it works a little bit nicer, like the conditions effects adding like an additional, maybe making it five 
instead of four for the conditions and the effects, and then maybe making the penalties four. Uh, it would also be cool if you could, in a sense, earn that. Like, even if they did something where you could uh, get something from a trader that would, in that map only, that they would have, like, an, a seventh slot where you could buy a increase to uh, your condition effects and then maybe in a, you know, increase into an increase to your penalty slots. That would be an interesting way of doing it. Uh, it would depend how hard-coded the UI um, interface there is laid out where if they could probably do that easily or not. Uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And before I go on any more of a rant, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, alright? Enjoy. Later.